uh, breakout drive by Perseverance in its slog up the rim of Jezero Crater reached a transition into a new terrain type. Many of the rocks here look like they were once covered in a paint-like coating that's now peeling off. On this episode of Mars Guy, last week I reported on the struggles of Perseverance driving up steep slopes covered in loose sand, gravel, and dust. This regolith deposit appears to cover the otherwise benign-looking path up the rim of Jezero Crater that will lead to interesting science targets on the other side. Since then, Perseverance completed two drives that provide some hope that progress won't be as painfully slow as it first appeared. The second of those drives covered 125 meters. Here's the view at the end, and here are Mars guys for scale and perspective. This long straight drive is really encouraging and seems to show that the regolith may not have a uniform rover impeding consistency. From here, there's an impressive view to the north. On the nearby hill, the size, shape, and distribution of rocks, their morphologic expression, is different than what's been observed since Perseverance climbed out of Naret Vivalis. Apparently, this made it worthy of a closer inspection. But as a reminder, Perseverance is on a roughly 25% grade. That's about 14 degrees. The turn and short drive to get to those rocks reveals what happens when driving cross-slope in this regolith. The struggles return. A course correction after less than 10 meters was needed, and the 20-meter drive ended in a mess of churned-up regolith. But Perseverance was greeted with a nice view along a clear divide between the two terrain types. The rocks here look like a pile of rubble with no obvious in-place outcrops, but that's probably just a reflection of how a former, more continuous deposit has eroded over time. The Mascam Z camera zoomed in on two of the largest rocks on the hill. The image reveals that they and other rocks display the ubiquitous patchy purplish coating observed on many rocks since the beginning of the mission. A much better look at this coating is available on a small cluster of rocks that Perseverance nearly drove onto. This is the first time that a coating has been observed in such a clear state of degradation. It looks like a thick layer of peeling paint ready for scraping. And I can assure you that scientists would love to scrape some off and get a piece into labs on Earth to figure out how it formed. Rock coatings are common on Earth, where some combination of water, airborne dust, and microbes contribute to its formation. On Mars today, there's plenty of airborne dust, but vanishingly small amounts of water, and as far as we know, no microbes. There was a lot of water on Mars a few billion years ago when Jezero Crater hosted a lake, but there's no way a rock coating formed at that time could have survived until now. Sandblasting by wind would have stripped it off long ago. So the coating is probably thousands to a few million years old. But where was the water that helped it form? We know that the rotational axis of Mars wobbles by tens of degrees over the course of millions of years. This means that its water ice deposits have migrated many times between the poles and lower latitudes, which might include Jezero Crater. This would allow for the presence of water ice among these rocks, but how Mars turns ice and dust into rock coatings is still a big mystery. 